Will you pray with me? Lord God, it is so good to worship. It is so good to worship you and you alone. And it's good to worship with other believers. And God, that last song is just, it's just perfect in what we need to do. All to you, we surrender. Everything that we have, everything we do, we surrender it to you. Thank you for today. Use these words for your honor, your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Because really we're... uh, important words for us to sing, whether it's today or all the, t- all the time, really. I surrender all. And I hope most of you here meant it when you sung it. We have these words come to our mind or we're, we're told to sing them and truly, those are the words we need to be able to say to the Lord. I surrender all to you, blessed Savior. So we're getting into this sermon series, All Aboard, and specifically we're looking at John chapter 14, verses 11 through 17, and you can turn there. We didn't have a scripture reading today because we read it all last week, and we're going to get into some of it as well today. And just to remind you, I I just gave a few simple things just to kind of highlight what we're talking about during this series. Three things, we just need to believe the truth about God. We need to continue the works of Jesus in his name, and we need to live by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Three simple things, easy to say, not always easy to live out. And maybe that's why those words, I surrender all, were very fitting for today. And these words that Jesus has for us, if you were not here last week, if you look at John in this section of scripture, verse chapter 13 through 17, it's in the upper room and he washes the disciples' feet and he kind of gives some final instructions for them before his eventual arrest, death on the the cross and what we celebrate in his resurrection. And so in chapter 14, we see a few words that are encouragement for us. And we know it's not just for the disciples, it's for all of us as well. And in chapter 17, I brought this, these verses up. It says, I do not ask for these only, this was Jesus praying, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that is us that they may all be one just as you, Father, in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This prayer, these words are not just for the disciples, they're for all of us. So we get into chapter 14, and we're going to look the next two weeks at verses 11 and the start of, of verse 12. So you can turn there if you're not already there. Chapter 14, verse 11. It says, Believe me, this is Jesus speaking. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe on the count of the works themselves. And we're going to talk about that first part. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. just the purest sense of knowing God. Not having to see a bunch of things, but just say, you know what? I believe what's in here. I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe the truth that's been spoken about you. I believe that you are Savior of the world. Believing 
that Jesus is who he is, that he is part of the triune God, we need to believe just the same. But the reality is believing is not quite that simple for a lot of people. You know, a lot of us grow up in the church and we read Bible stories and we just assume, yep, they've heard it, they're going to believe it. Or we tell people, hey, there's truth in this word, you need to live by it. And the problem is, we live in a world, and even I get caught up into this world as well, that we're kind of skeptical, right? We don't just believe what is said. We've got to test it. We've got to know, is this really truth? So I want to give a little, uh, little example today, and this may be, uh, fits as a side note, I brought a uh, cooler that we have at home, and brought some water with me today, and this maybe will uh, fit as a secondary thing, because there are no excuses for anybody to have to go out to get a drink today, okay? So, does anybody want a bottle of, wa- bottle of water? There's no tricks here. Just asking, does anybody want a bottle? I knew. Hunter was looking at me with that look like he's ready to chug this thing. Anybody else want a bottle of water? No tricks? Wow. There's a few people back here that, hey, do I throw? Will you catch? Here we go. Roy's Roy's not afraid. Anybody else want it? Here you go. Now, that is really dangerous for me, uh, just chucking out. I do have... I got a couple more bottles here. Uh, if anybody wants, anybody else want one? You wanted one, Jackson? You want one? I only have a couple left. I saw Jackson's a little bit ago. Which one do you want? The one with the white cap? You want the yellow cap? Sure, why not? Now hold on, I, I have to at least say something about this. Uh, Jackson, you wanted the one with the white cap. And most of us would say, there's something going on here, isn't there? And you're right. It says, Aquafina, pure water, perfect taste, drinking, purified drinking water, purified by reverse osmosis. And I'll tell you, this is exactly what this is. It's just pure drinking water. But you look here and you're saying there's something not right there, right? Well, I'll uh, get out my other thing here, just a bottle of lemon juice. It's got a white cap on it, right? Do you still, you still want that, Kellen? <laughs> sure, why not? All right. I'll switch the cap for you. So it's the uh, correct cap. I will also say I got a uh, little bottle of bleach here as well. Still want it? It's pure drinking water. Yeah? You can have it if you want it. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with it. Other than whatever might have seeped through from that lemon on the top. He's looking at it. He's questioning it. Right? So, I'm telling you, that is totally safe. There is no bleach in that. We were out of bleach in my house, so I quick stopped uh, by the store and got some just for this lesson. And I'm sure there's some cleaning that needs to be be done in our house. Right, girls? So, we look at things. We look at things... A lot. And I'll just say people look at the church from the outside and they say there's something wrong that's in there. Like what's, what's that yellow cap? Like am I being tricked or is this actually pure water that you're going to give me? Like I think so much the world looks in And they say, whatever is in there, I don't trust that it's actually good. 
I don't actually trust that that is pure living water. And it's just like Jesus says to us here, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Like people should just look in and they should just believe, hey, this is the word of God, this is what you should live by. This water that's in here, it is totally safe to drink. It is actually good water. Actually, we are offering you living water that you will never have to thirst again. But the world looks in and says, hmm, I'm not sure if I trust that. And that's where I think the second part of this verse fits in just perfectly. Or else believe on account of the works themselves. I didn't think anybody would actually take that water, but Kellen just went for it. But if I would have taken that water and opened it up and taken a drink myself, then you might look and say, okay, that's not lemon water. There's no bleach in there. There's no tricks that are being played. Jesus says, believe on account of the works themselves. See, there's this picture of faith and works coming together, of the truth that is found about God, the truth that is in his word, the truth that Jesus spoke about, connecting with the things that he did. And it is the exact same with us. People should see our devotion to the Lord, but they should see by our actions that it all connects together. It's like he's saying, if my verbal testimony is leaving doubts in your mind, leaving doubts about who I am, then look at my works. Let the works join with my words and lead you to faith in him, in me, as he's speaking. Jesus was the ex ultimate example of faith and works working together. And he did it time and time again. And he did offer living water. Like the woman at the well who says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become like a spring of water welling up to, to eternal life. And he did this to a Samaritan woman that would never have been spoken to. Jesus was the perfect of example of putting faith and works together. He says, there's my two points there. But he says in John 10, Jesus answered them, I told you, I told you who I am, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. And he goes on, if I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do, the, but if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. His works bear witness about who he was. Our works should bear witness to who Jesus is. The verse continues in John 14. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. And that point I had up there, believe the truth about Jesus or believe the truth because of works seen. So it go goes on and we're just going to look at 
the first part of chapter 12. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. This isn't just Jesus that is going to do this. But he says we will do the works that he does as well. All believers will do Jesus' works. It's just what we do. It's the ordinary thing. The ordinary thing that Christians do. Ephesians 2 Starting in verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works. We are not saved by our works. We're saved by the grace of God, so that no one may boast. And then it says in verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus, we are a new creation when we have accepted his, him as Lord. And we are created in Christ Jesus for good works. And God's prepared all these before and for us that we should walk in them. When we accept Jesus as Lord, when we surrender all, God begins molding us. Molding us into something beautiful to be used by him. He takes our brokenness and turns it into a testimony of who he is in our healing. Ordinary Christians have faith in Christ and are active in good works. And these works are part of God's plan to share the gospel to the entire world. These good works are valid evidence that someone is walking as one of God's chosen. It's just ordinary Christians. So what does it look like to be an ordinary Christian. How do I live my life if I am an ordinary Christian? How does the world see who Jesus is in my life? And I just have two things here. The first is have full devotion to him. And I think we look past this a lot of times because we just want to go out and do. We want to we wanna do this and change the world. We want to go be active. We want to give to this. We want to show everybody who Jesus is by our actions. But it starts right here, having full devotion to him. It's just what ordinary Christians do. A story in Matthew 26, and I know it's small up there. A woman comes, comes to Jesus with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment. And she poured it on his head, on Jesus' head, as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to him, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. And goes on to say, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. She was fully devoted to Jesus. So fully devoted that her works matched up with her devotion. The best work we can do, I think, is to love God and have full devotion to him. It's like the story in Luke 10 
with Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus while, while Martha is in the kitchen. And I love Mary and I love Martha. But Jesus sees the devotion of Mary and says she has chosen the good portion. The woman in Matthew 26, she has done a beautiful thing to me. There's a devotion to the Lord in what ordinary Christians do. And there's some words I wanted to point out here. And some words that you see in there, for she has done a beautiful thing to me. St. John 14, it says how they will see account of the works themselves. And it talks about the good works in Ephesians 2 when he says how we are his workmanship created for good works. And this word is used over and over and over again. This woman was living out, being his workmanship. When she did this good work, the exact same words, the beautiful thing, the good work to Jesus, out of full devotion to him. It's just what ordinary Christians do. Pretty simple, but... We love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. Ordinary Christians have love for others. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. And if, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk. Empty words. Empty talk. But let us live in, but in deed and in truth. Let us love. John 13, he talks about the love that we have for other believers as well. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They go together. Love for God, love for others. It's like the vine and the branches in John 15. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, whoever has devotion to me, who lives with me, who studies me, who knows who I am, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Christians are defined by works or life which flows from faith in Jesus and point to the glory of who he is. Do I need to get like practical? I mean, it's, it's a simple thing, but how do we do this, like, specifically? Like, there's opportunities in front of us, and I think that's how I can say specifically. We just brought up the Kelowna Food Pantry, and I hear more and more how these pantries are starting to get used more and more as stuff prices have skyrocketed, Right? And Lower Deer Creek has a history there, and they say, oh, you just need to give once a year because you guys give so much. But out of our devotion for Christ, by wanting to share who he is, like we should fill up that food pantry 
with so much that it's overflowing. At Thanksgiving time, at Christmas time, our words and our actions should line up real close. And we've heard testimonies about how this is happening, right? I shared the story about Nemi last week, and he is still just blown away by the love that we have for these people in Nigeria that we've never met. And the question maybe I have for you is, what are the good works that God is calling you to that you want to point people to Jesus with? Like our works, we're not just going to do them alone and say, hey, here you go. No, we're going to say, we're doing this because of our devotion to Christ. Because we know that when you would fall in love with who Jesus is, when you receive these things, when you are physically fed, you will be spiritually fed by the living water that God has for you. And we will point people to the salvation they can find in him alone. I could say a lot there, but I'm just going to close with this, maybe as a blessing, but also as a prayer. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Let me pray. Lord God, we know there is darkness all around. But God, we want to let our light shine. We want other people to see the good works And it's not for us to boast, but it's to boast about who you are and what you've done. And I pray in whatever way, whatever opportunity we get in the little ways or the huge ways that we have this week to share something with somebody else, that we will testify about who you are so that others will come to know you as Savior and Lord. God, lead us. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.